um, institutions like you know the, like maybe the um, the uh, uh, conservatives, uh, Christian conservatives, conservatives, and uh, from the Christian fundamentalists in, in the, the states, and from the Jewish uh, lobby, and all these kinds of you know, pressure groups that always um, uh, foster and uh, fuel the uh, bad image of Islam in the Western uh, media. So I have his. Uh, reason here. He says that Orientalism enables us to understand the stylistic discipline by which the European culture had managed and even produced the Orient politically, sociologically, militarily, ideologically, scientifically, and imaginatively during the post-enlightened period. So this is how they understand us. And this could be a twofold job for Edward Said. The first one, he is providing the theory about how to study the other, how the identity of the other can be misrepresented in the culture and in the tradition of the superpower. And so many um, academic theses were based on this theory, the misrepresentation and the stereotypes of the uh, other. And on the other hand, he provides us with an empirical experience through which we can see how the Orient is presented to the uh, West. So now he is giving us two things, the theory and the practice as well. It was saying he's a Christian. He, he, originally he was Palestinian and uh, you know, he worked in the States in the uh, American uh, universities for maybe like 30, 30 years, 35 years or so. He's very, very famous. He's maybe too famous. Everybody knows him. And I met him once uh, in England when he was offered um, an honorary uh, doctorate degree in the, from the University of Exeter where I was doing my uh, degree. Yeah, he died about maybe five years ago, I think in 2002. He was Christian, he was Palestinian, but he was taking the same line of Naum Chomsky. Do you, does this make sense to you? Naum Chomsky? He's American, and uh, Native American, but he's taking the hard line against the American policy and the American administration for the whole of his uh, life. So he's catching up with Naum Chomsky about how he uh, looks at the American uh, administration policy in the Middle East. So he's, he's been... Uh, very productive author about uh, this field and um, you know maybe uh, all the academic theses in the West that are made on the presentation of the other have to have in some way a relationship to this uh, book. It has to have like according to uh, the academic uh, traditions the person has to mention to refer to some familiarity with this book in his um, literature review. Uh, I don't want to like to go into further details because I can see that we are running out of time because I hope that I will at least sit with the sister from year two. Has she already gone? She's appeared. She disappeared, huh? She's coming back? Ah, oh, fine. It's my mistake. I, uh, right, if this is the case, so... Do you, do you mind if I go for another 10 minutes or 15 minutes? That can summarize to us the aim of the book and the value of its approach. For example, I have here this quotation that says, Orientalism depends for its strategy on this flexible position of superiority. You know, we have two positions, a superior one and an inferior one. Okay? So Orientalism depends in, for its strategy on this superior authority, which puts the Westerner in a whole series of possible relationships with the Orient. When I you know, just think that I am the owner of this place, so I have full freedom to dispose of it, of it the way I like, okay, because I have the power. Right? This is the same policy of Orientalism. So I can decide whatever rules and laws in this place according to my own uh, selection. From this perspective, the Westerner was uh, 
having this sort of relationship with the West, with the Orient, in terms of the politics, in terms of the uh, social uh, traditions, in terms of the uh, literature, in terms of the scholarship, in the way they like, without even uh, losing this relative upper hand. All the time he's thinking that I am the Westerner, I am the superior, and he is the inferior. And why should it have been otherwise? Especially during the period of extraordinary ascendancy, from the later Renaissance to the present. When you think about the status quo of the West and the East, you know, until now we think that we are third world countries. We are inferior and they are the superior. They are the powerful. We are the weaker. So still, this kind of interior-superior relationship is valid. Um, the scientist, or the scholar, or the missionary, the trader, or the soldier, was in. He was in the Orient, or he was able to think about the Orient, because he could be there. As simple as that. يعني أنا الحق لي الحق أعمل اللي أنا عاوزه وأصور اللي أنا عاوزه وبالطريقة اللي أنا عاوزها لأن أنا أقدر أعمل كده. Okay? But not vice versa. Or could think about it with very little resistance on the Orient's part. There was no resistance. There was no encountering between me as the Westerner and the Orient or the person from the Orient. There was no resistance from his side to say that well, stop it. You have just said nonsense about my culture and about my religion. There was no resistance to this. They were writing and there was no counter criticism from the part of the Orient to discredit what the Westerner says. And under the general heading of knowledge of the Orient, now this is the, the reason, the, the justification that was given to the West, the people in the West. We are doing this in order to know the Orient. We want to explore the Orient, okay? Without revealing the actual aims of their work. And within the umbrella of Western hegemony, hegemony means like too much control of someone or of something. And within the umbrella of Western hegemony over the Orient during the period from the end of the 19th century, there emerged a complex orient suitable for study in the academy. من القرن التاسع عشر، اتضح في هناك زخم من المعلومات عن المشرق. يلبي كافة ال interests to respond to and satisfy all interests. Some people are gathering information about religion. Some are gathering information about social traditions and so forth in the academy, like that's why we have um, disciplines called sociology, anthropology, historiography, all these disciplines emerged because they needed them in order to analyze and interpret such massive literature about the Orient. So in academy you will find it. For museum display, they wanted to have something exotic. Something new that comes from the Orient. Come and see that. No, no, we've got like a lot of um, objects, a lot of um, like maybe images from the Orient. So come and entertain yourself. We've got lots and plenty of them in our museums. For reconstruction on the colonial office, we've got like this information about people in Iraq, people who belong to this, to this and that religious sect, people who have different various cultural backgrounds, so let us reshape it. Let us like reshake it.